Uh, our, our last speaker is Nader Afshar. Are you here? <laughs> so Nader is a senior controls engineer at the mechatronics and instrumentation team within the controls and computing group at the Australian Synchrotron. He is a beamline engineer of the X-ray fluorescence microscopy beamline and has been working mainly on motion and experiment controls, particularly BMAC EPIX platform and GeoBrick LV systems since 2013. He will give us a talk titled Optimized Multidimensional Image Scanning with RASCAN. Uh, my presentation is about um, a solution for optimized multidimensional image scanning, which we call RASCAN. Um, it's about the ideas, the approach, and um, a little bit about the implementation, not too much in details. And this is implemented um, in XFM beamline in the Australian Synchrotron since um, 2015-16. So, um, synchrotron X-ray fluorescence microscopy is is um, a serial imaging technique, which requires uh, the sample to be scanned in the synchrotron beam light, um, and every point on on the sample surface um, should be uh, passed through the 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 synchrotron beam. So the, the techniques that, uh, the optional techniques that they could, could use um, are listed here. The pixel by pixel um, technique uh, provides um, a very, very high overhead for the small uh, dwell time. This is the typical dwell time for one pixel on the image, which is around um, one millisecond, and it's now well below one millisecond with, with the more advanced detectors, which have much more sensitivity. So pixel by pixel is out of question. Uh, in XFM, they've been using um, fly scanning, and uh, since the beginning of um, um, the work, and um, what we call line by line scanning because we need to scan the whole image and uh, this is consisted of a fly scan over a line then the sample uh, stage will position the sample or the stop stops the fly scan uh, positions on the next line starts and accelerates to the f to the to the um, required velocity and scans the next line so this is um, the second um, dimension. This is basically the second dimension of the scanning. And still, we've got um, uh, something in the order of 30, 35% overhead for a typical case. This is not the worst case. This is not the, the best case. This is just a typical case. So, um, and where this overhead happens, this overhead mostly happens where, where the, the sample stage needs to stop after one fly scan, uh, position itself to position the sample for the, for the next line and start the, the next fly scan. And this um, overhead just um, will carry over into all the, the higher dimension techniques like Zane's and, and tomography, which, uh, which scan angle and energy for, uh, every, for every one um, complete image. So they, they stack up images for different angles or for different energies, but they all inherit this, this overhead of typically 30, 35%. So basically science is now limited by, by this overhead, which is mostly uh, due to motion uh, overhead. So the first um, idea, uh, the initial idea of the project was to use uh, trajectory scanning instead of line by line scanning and somehow optimize and reduce that, that overhead using a position velocity time um, which 
we have uh, many implementation of it, um, and that that the perception was an implementation of the PVT array, download it to the controller, let the controller execute that PVT, that will solve our problem. And uh, the scientists um, thought that they can easily pick the PVT points, put them in an array, and then they will have uh, a decent um, trajectory scan. So here we can see uh, a plot of a position uh, curve which goes from zero up to two, whatever the, the, the units are, and comes back to zero. So it looks like a smooth turnaround um, trajectory. But if we look at the, the velocity, then we can see some, some concerning um, things because there are overshoots over the, um, the, the velocity of one and minus one that we have specified and those overshoots velocities uh, are not explicitly specified in the PVT array. Um, and also, uh, acceleration curves show that we have no idea of what acceleration limits would be or the maximum values of accelerations would be, and they are discontinuous in general form. So there are infinite jerk points. So in general, um, what we found out, um, and it was obvious, of course, that setting PVT points is not a trivial task. So if we deliver the PVT array implementation directly to scientists, that doesn't solve, the, that won't solve the problem. So we went back to, to the board and um, looked at, once again, at uh, the good old step scan motion. Step scan motion is a sequence of dwell at a point elements. And that can be nicely formulated by an array of points or positions, to be, to be uh, mathematically correct, uh, and an array of dwell times, which usually can be reduced in, in applications to one dwell time applied to all the points. What's nice about this, this um, formulation is that the blue parts are, are science request or user request, and the orange parts are overhead motion, which basically the scientists doesn't care about. They want it to be as fast as possible and as, uh, yeah, just as fast as possible. That's because that's the overhead. So usually that's the jog move that is taken care of by, by the motion controller, and it's in a way optimized in a motion controller by using S-curving method, which is um, not quite mathematically optimized, but it, at least it's a decent kinematic um, motion. So if you generalize that idea, um, here we can, can define a fly scan motion as, um, or formulate a fly scan motion as a sequence of scan along a vector element. And again, analog to what we had in a step scan, this can be formulated um, with an, uh, using an array of, of n-dimensional vectors and an array of velocities, which, again, can be usually reduced to just one scalar velocity. So this is a nice formulation, and it is a multidimensional formulation. It still follows that golden rule of separation between the request space and the engineering uh, space or constraint space. So the, the orange ones, the skip moves, we basically, if we could, we didn't want to have them. But we can't jump between the fly scans. That's why we have them. Those are the overhead wastes. So let's go back to the, the XFM imaging uh, problem. This is how the request space now looks like. Um, the users just need to define the region of interest, the velocity of the fly scans, and uh, the, spa uh, the, the, the incremental steps between the lines. And the rest of uh, the, the, the trajectory comes from mechanical and motion limitations or constraints, um, going through kinematic transformations, which brings in the geometry uh, information, and then ends up in a set of kinematic limits 
and some, some additional uh, constraints and, and inputs, for instance, like the, the encoder resolutions and things like that, but um, those are the details. Then we can form a math mathematical optimization problem from all these inputs. Two sets of inputs, one from request space, the other one from, from constraint space, and we have got our, motion, uh, our, our mathematical optimization problem. In most cases, this mathematical op uh, optimization problem can be solved in a closed form, which makes everything easier. In some cases, we have a too complex mathematical problem, which we haven't been able to solve in closed form, so we have iteration methods to solve it. Solving that will either, in design or on, on runtime, will, will give, up, give us the, the rest of the trajectory, which is mathematically optimized based on the inputs. Here we can see, I'll have to pass through this, this um, slide quickly, but uh, this shows four optimized um, trajectories for four sets of inputs. Again, the inputs are color coded. A blue is the, the request space, and um, uh, orange is the constraints. And you can, if you can see, it's a bit small, but the the overhead time for each one of the the trajectory uh, optimized trajectory solutions are uh, are also um, on the legend of the plot. So we have um, an, uh, a modular, nice vertical um, implementation of the RASCAN um, in production since 2015, 2016, um, which uses a 5 plus 1 PVT symmetric template. And it has its uh, scan solver, which is uh, a RASCAN solver, which is actually a builder because we have a closed form solution in this case, and we have programmed that down in the Turbo PMAC system. And the Turbo PMAC also runs the motion program, and it uses its um, internal PVT motion engine. RASCAN 2 uh, is to be released in 2017. Uh, it uses a 7 PVT point template, but it's still symmetric. And I'll come back to that in detail if, if, if I have time. Uh, but in this case, the, the RASCAN solver is implemented in Python um, in the high-level high language. So this is a, a, a close look at uh, the motion program code, which the heart of the motion program code, which is a simple loop of the, those five PVT points. So that's what I meant by five plus one. And blue and orange parameters, again, are the output of the solver, in this case, a closed form. So they come out of some um, formulas which are programmed in, in, in the controller. Um, first results, um, this is a visit map, which is the detector just listening to the positions, just capturing the positions without the beam. and. Um, um, on the right, you can see that um, the trajectory is is precisely tracked by by the by the by the stage. A part of it is because it's a very good stage and it's tuned very well. But also, the trajectory is is kinematically optimized, which means it's easy to to track. And uh, the times, uh, overhead times, on the other hand, as we expected, are now down to 30 milliseconds, which saves um, and has been saving hours and hours of time, um, four hours a day probably in, in XFM. But these are all uh, typical numbers. Uh, it's implemented in Delta Tau, GeoBrick, LV. This is a nice image. Um, of it, this is the output of fluorescence microscopy, basically. Uh, the dwell time, as, as, as we mentioned, is um, 200 microseconds, well below one millisecond. Uh, the, the pixel pitch of two microns, and um, this is done in 31 minutes for a 25-minute uh, 
exposure, useful time, and without RASCAN, it would have taken uh, 46 minutes. So uh, the message is uh, separation of required and overhead components helped a lot um, in design, in implementation, in integration with, with scientists' system and the experiment control, because it's very clear who needs to be worried about what. Scientists need to be worried about defining their, their requests, and engineer tools um, need, to be, need to solve the motion problem in, a, in an optimized way. Effective mathematical formulation for fly scan optimization problem, again, came out of the first one. Trajectory is optimized now for tracking precision and as well as for speed. So tracking precision is also as important as, as the, the overhead saving, because if you have a trajectory which is very fast, but the, the, the stage cannot actually track it, follow it, it's not, it's not good. Um, motion problem is solved below user application level. That's very important. Again, re-emphasizing on this. Um, implementation is robust and it's scalable and it's modular. Um, runtime, because of that, that kind of implementation, because we don't download and upload um, uh, an array, a, a long array of PVT points, we download the solution, not the PVT array. That gives us the flexibility in runtime to control it, to jump from one line to another one, to stop where we want, um, to pause and resume those things, control shutters. Those are very easy because there is no array of, of PVT points that we want to, to uh, fast forward or re rewind or, or handle. Uh, um, it's just a number of line, which, which line number we are. And on the con construction is asymmetric uh, skip trajectories and adaptive estimation correction of kinematics. Uh, thank you very much and um,